he was so crazy about they are so crazy about learning a skill, monetizing the skills and all that. And then we noticed that that phase can easily, you know, uh, more like after you've gone through the training process, you, you've learned how to monetize and then how to keep, how to keep clients coming in, um, inflows of clients coming in regularly because our customers is the lifeblood of every, every business. And without, without customer, uh, there's no business will exist. In the first place so you want to keep people to keep coming patronizing you so that the inflow can come in and then you can scale up in your business but if you don't have that they need to do that there's no way i'm going to scale and so i came up with this this was something i used some some few years back about six six to five years ago i can't really remember even before the before i started on my own all right um, i learned this and i did this it worked tremendously until I stopped because I was kind of occupied, uh, busy consulting for different companies that I never had time to work on my own um, business, okay, my own company. So I thought, okay, fine, let me do this for creative so you guys can see uh, that. Uh, I discussed this with, uh, with Lois, I think some weeks ago, not two or three weeks ago, and then we started, we started doing something on that, about that. And I think it is something everybody here would, would love, we will appreciate it. And then um, it, it will convert, surely it will convert. But the last time I did it, I said out, um, I got feedbacks and clients were, were coming in, but I need to present my slide right now so we can all uh, be in one sync. So uh, so how will the training be? Uh, 30 days uh, will go. This is how I want to run the, uh, the stop. So we meet every Friday. And every Friday we are meeting is based on what we'll be talking about tonight, all right? It's based on what we're talking about tonight. And please, if this meeting cuts in 40 or 45 minutes and we are not done, I uh, probably need to click on that link again so that we can we can finish up. I'm using the free version of Zoom, so I need to put that out there. So once it's time, I'll let you know. But if you are done before that time, great. If you're not, um, we need to we need to um so sorry. If you're not done before that time, we'll, uh, we'll need to schedule and then click on that same link. So let me go ahead and then share, share my screen with you. Um, I hope you can see my screen. If you can see my screen, please let me know if you can. You can see my screen, please. If you can, you can type yes. You can say yes or just uh, put in a comment. What is it? Mr. Ibuku, please mute yourself. I've muted him. Someone here to want to be muted. Okay, great. Can you all see my screen? You can't even see the chat. Okay, yes, you can. All right, thank you, thank you. I, I needed to check that um, on the chat. Okay, so the client um, acquisition strategy, um, never mind what is beneath it. So the next step is, this is my focus, all right? This is the focus for this meeting, all right? And a lot of the 30 days, this is the focus. So number one, you're looking at the research uh, research target niche. I'm gonna explain all of these things and then share the idea with you. Uh, we'll do competitive, an uh, competitive analysis, or competitors analysis, uh, use websites, uh, like similar web, I'll show you all of those things. The proposal, the call to action, and they're the gatekeepers. Now, um, I'm I'm going to be talking about the research because it's it is important. Okay, so I guess everybody here we're from different um, we are different creative, all right. We have copywriters, YouTubers, we have uh, Facebook ad experts, YouTube ad experts, web designers, SEOs, and all that. Okay, now as creative. Um, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't serve every niche, all right? You need to cave out your own niche, all right? Who do you want to market to? Who do you want to sell to? All right, you don't need to say, oh, I am doing this and I'm doing it for everybody. I want everybody to be my customer. I want everybody to be my customer. It's like you're throwing stone in the market. You know, it will end up hitting somebody or no one. All right. So you need to have a serial target. Like 
I want to I want to target these people in this industry. I have a friend, he does website design, but his focus are celebrities. Okay, his focus, he does celebrity website design. That's what he does. If you go meeting with e-commerce, meeting with um, sales funnel, all of those things, that he will not, he will not even budge. All right, because he has been able to care about his own system and he choose to focus on those people. Now, if 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 you are there, you are good with copywriting, and you want to write for people, who do you want to write for? For authors, for coaches, for thought leaders, they are all in the same group, I know. For companies, for SMEs, no, you should be able to cave out the niche, okay? Now, um, I'm going to use an example for this. Now, the research I'm talking about is about you knowing your target market. Who do you want to who do you want to serve? Who do you want your content to serve? Who do you want your skills set to serve? For instance, let me use uh, someone into web design. All right. Now, you know how to design websites. Who are you designing websites for? Are you designing websites for small business owners? Are you designing websites for corporate organizations? Are you doing it for school? Are you doing it for government agencies and brassatas? Are you doing this for celebrities? Are you, or you just want to focus on e-commerce, all right? Now, don't just say, fine, if you're starting out, you can decide to play around because you want to get clients, you want to make money and all that. But as you go in the, as you grow in the industry, you should be able to streamline the type of customers that uh, uh, probably have been good to you over the years and those that uh, your designs has resonate with. And you feel, oh, this particular set of people, I think, um, my designs are more channeled to them. So let me focus on these people. Or you have an idea on how a school management website should look like, portal rather, should look like, okay? And you have all the uh, call to action plan out and everything. You can choose to focus on that niche. Or you choose to focus on uh, small business owners who probably selling stuff on Instagram, on Facebook that does not have their own platform. You want them to have their own like you. Uh, uh, you uh, what's it called now? Conga, Conga, or or Jumia kind of website, e-commerce. Uh, e e e you can focus on them too and serve this niche. Okay. Now let's assume that you now have your own niche, and I'm going to use website designers for for example. And you want to serve these people. Now you also need to make some research. Okay. If, if I'm going to if I'm going to service school owners, all right, I want to build websites for school owners, and this is my target audience. These are my target audience. I want to focus on them. Now, this applies to whether you're a copywriter, whether whether you do, you run ads, uh, Facebook, Instagram ads, social media marketer, or, or whatever. All right, I, I know I know some coach, I know some coach or motivational speakers that will never go to any how events to go and speak. Yes, I know people that there are set, set of people they focus on. There are much some motivational speakers that their own is just to talk to and impact youth. If they are calling them to come and do corporate um, public speaking and all that, they will tell you they can't. It's not as if they can, but it is not their calling. But there are some people, they just want to do everything. Okay, so let's assume that You've identified your niche. You are designing websites for uh, for school owners or for schools, all right? And then you know all the intricacies and all that. Now, let's now assume that you want to acquire clients. The first thing you need to do first, the first thing you need to do is to make research online. And if I'm targeting, if I'm targeting, excuse me, so if I'm targeting, if I'm targeting a particular uh, a particular school, I'm targeting a particular school. And then when I check out that portal, one thing you want to look out for is what is missing. What is that one thing or two or three things you can fix that is missing? Sometimes it, those things might not be missing, but there's something you can create and say, ah, these people need to be, they need to be doing this, they need to be doing that, they need to be doing this and that. Okay, you can, you, 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 you can choose to create a solution for them and market that solution to them. Now, having identified that, now do a research. 
look for schools. Okay, let's just assume that you don't even have, you don't even have any uh, any school in mind or any clients in mind. Just go online. Just go online and then search for search for search by location. I guess by now, uh, all of us here should know how to make uh, search searches on Google. Okay, we should know how to make searches on Google. So you can. You can search. You can search by location. You can search by country. You can search by your proximity. Okay. So assuming you live in Lagos, all right. I don't expect you to say um, I'm looking for, uh, let's say, secondary school in Nigeria. It is not generic. It is not. It is not laser targets. All right. That's generic rather. But it's not laser targets. I'm in Lagos. I'm looking for schools in Lagos. Even if if you are in Lagos, you want to target school in Abuja. You say secondary school in Abuja, Nigeria, all right? Or secondary school in Abuja, you don't put Nigeria. If you are in Lagos, secondary school in Lagos, all right? That is in Lagos. But if I live on the island and I want to target those on the island, you want to exclude the, the, the mainland people, you make a research for those living for, for school, secondary schools on the island, all right? Bittura Island and Lekki, that's what you want to put on search. You don't want to say if if you say Lagos, it brings you know populate the whole secondary school uh, for you. But you should be able to streamline that. That's how to do uh, Google search. Now either you do by location or you do by proximity where you stay. All right, you don't want to go too far, but you want to do Lagos or what or where you stay by location or by proximity. Having done that, now. I need you to select, now this is an assignment, as I'm saying it, but I'm still gonna say at, at the end of the, the, the class today. Choose at least 10, all right? Why you're making this, at least 10, all right? That's minimum 10, maximum 20 or 15, all right? Go online, go on Google, search for these people. And then make sure that there's something that needs to be fixed about their business. Now, some of you say, ah, but I'm not a website designer. Now, if you're a content writer, you, you write you write copies. Some of these companies in one way or the other have written something online before. They run adverts. You want to check what they have done. You want to go on their pages on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn. You want to see how they phrase words. All right, and say, no, 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 this thing cannot sell. The way they wrote this thing, there's no, there's no way I'm going to buy. And you know you can write better copies. So what you want to do, those are your target people. Just write the name of the company down. Okay. So I'm not so you can see that I've moved from being a website designer to, to a copywriter. It's even the same thing to a to a graphics person. All right. By a graphics designer, do the same thing. You see what a company is putting out there. You see the type of designer, the type of designer are throwing out out there. And you are seeing some misses and all that, something that is not captivating, even the words they are using. Write the name of the company down. So do like 10, all right? Get 10 companies name, minimum 10, maximum 20 or 15. When you are done with that, what you want to do next is this guy. You want to do competitor analysis. Competitor analysis. Now, what do you do? You use, uh, usually I use websites uh, like similar web. So, out of those 10, uh, 10 companies that you have identified, Mr. Jubri, out of those 10 companies that you have identified, okay, what you want to do, is this thing being record? Okay, it's record. What you want to do, all right, is to see, is to see their competitors. Okay, what you want to do out of those 10 is to see who are their direct or indirect competitors in the industry. All right, you want to see their competitor. So use website like similar web. There are other websites out there, but I use similar web. I use um I've used similar web. Uh, there's this one as I think Cora. There was a time I was using Cora, but I'm not too sure if you still have that feature. But if you don't, similar web can give you almost everything you're looking for. Or even on Facebook, just search, uh, or even on Google, just search for the same name. Uh, search for a niche and then it will uh, bring out uh, people with that same niche. Okay, you have the 10 people. Look for their competitors. All right. Once you are able to identify their competitors, and if their competitors are doing fine, the ones that are doing fine, compare them together. 
All right. If you can download any um, sample stuff online, please do. If you can screenshot, please do. Keep all of this in one document. Keep all of this in one document. Mm -hmm. Keep all of this in one document, okay? Keep all of this in one document. So number one thing, what we have done, you've identified your niche, the people you want to serve. You make research about them. You'll be able to identify 10, minimum 10, maximum 20 or 15. Then the third step is you've been able to identify the competitors, all right? Look for two or three, okay? Two or three competitors. And then analyze as against what they are doing. Make sure you use the ones that are doing well in the industry, okay? In that your niche is industry, that client that you want to run stuff with, all right? Make sure you look for someone that is doing something good in that uh, company that brand that is doing uh, better than them. So the third thing you want to do is the proposal. Now, uh, this document will contain what their brand is putting out there and how you can make it better. All right, it is not the normal, the normal uh, proposal. All right, so there's this type of proposal I used to send. I like visual proposals. All right, telling stories with your proposal, not just executive uh, summary, introduction. We are writing what we do, what we can do for you. All of those things to me are not. People usually take. Well, I, I don't know if they still read them these days, but, <laughs> but, uh. So me, I found that it does not work because some of these guys don't have the time to start reading and all of those things. They just look at the front page, look at the last page because those are the places that uh, some interesting stuff are. Probably at the, at the, the middle too. You want to look, do a perfect proposal. Perfect proposal, uh, what I mean by perfect proposal is that captivate them visually with the screenshot you have made from what they are doing online and they are not getting results, all right? What you now do is that with their competitors, put their competitors either by the left or by the side, all right, either left or right, and then put them together. What you now have to tell them is that, see what your computer is doing and they're getting results. See what you are doing. You are getting little or no results. Now, I can help you get this type of results and even supersede them, all right? Their computer results and even supersede your computer results. How? And then you begin to show them how you can do it. And make sure that for everything you are showing them or, or how you can do it, their competitors are not already implementing. All right, so that they don't say you are copying what you what you are copying that, that, that they are competitors. There's a company that wants to run away from it, from copying the competitors. Okay, you don't want to do that. Now you, you already know what is working for the competitors. Don't put that on what you can do in what you can do for them. What you can simply do for them, list it out and tell them, I can do X, Y, Z. These things are missing from your own marketing materials and they are also missing from your client marketing materials. Now, would you rather take my solution or continue doing what you are doing and get little or no results? Now, you're not just telling them, you are showing them. They are seeing what you can do. They are seeing how you can impact them. So you can even go as, as far as writing figures. I, one, one of the companies I, I, I was consulting for the other, uh, those years, uh, I think two years before uh, they stopped being existent, where we're doing stuff for one of the top brands in banks in Nigeria. And you know, for every now and then, these guys will always you know, give them some, some value pack, right? Some value pack that, that, that other banks are not doing, and they are giving them exposure. I don't want to coordinate because this thing is, is on record, okay? Okay, so you want to you want to give them what their client is not doing, all right, and then supersede, supersede them, okay? But if in a, in a way that uh, you are able to get a competitor that is probably uh, in that same space and is making wave, so what you can do instead is to knock off the competitor's part and then show them where they are and where they could be, all right? This is your solution. This is what they are doing. This is what they are doing. And they are getting little or no results. But with this, they can get better results, all right? With sales, visibility, and all that. Now, when I, like I said, 
copywriting, SEO, websites, Facebook ads, what, whatever. Okay, you can sell those metrics to them. Now, once that is done, the next thing you want to do in that, in that document, okay, it is to provide, is to provide a call to action. All right, is to provide a call to action. The call to action is you, you are not begging them. You have done your homework. Now, if you want my solution, call me. And it's at that point that you become a thought leader. It is at that point that you become an expert. Now, there's difference between there is a brief, come and pitch, let us hear you. When you pass, we'll call you. And I have done my assignment. I've submitted these things to you. And I want you guys to call me, reach out to me. These things are two different things. The reason why I don't go for pitches is because sometimes they've already they've already chosen their uh, the 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 people they want to work with. They've chosen the people they want to work with, and then they just want to waste people's time. User, you are you are, you are not muted, please. I'm trying to mute you here, but it's not muting. Okay, that's one of the reasons why I don't go for, for some of these speeches because of somehow they've chosen somebody just want people to come and waste waste their time. Okay, so this document make sure that you with, with your call to action, you have your email address, phone numbers, WhatsApp, social media accounts, everything is intact and it's in there. Now, if they now call you, you can go, you can build them anything you want to build them, depending on you. But then, but then I realized that it's not as straightforward as it is because of these guys. Now, these guys, I call them the gatekeepers. These guys have little clue or no idea of the immediate need of the company. All right. These, these, these people, they are the gate man, most of them the gate men, most of them time. They they are the co-workers, uh, the employee rather, the employees, they are. They are the top decks, uh, what do they call them now? Top decks, whatever, whatever. Front decks um, officer, yeah. Front decks officers, security um, secretaries, PAs, all right? They have no clue, okay? They can just, they will block you and say, you shall not pass, as in you will not come. Now, this will block you from seeing the top management. That's the truth. You, you have to uh, have, uh, what, uh, appointment, book appointment with them. But then you have to look for a way to either bypass them or go through them. Look for a way to either bypass them or go through them. There, there's, there's this uh, software I used to use some, some time ago. I searched for it. I think it's not in existence, but I'm still going to see if um, they migrated they are migrated into the premium version. It is called Clearbit. Clearbit is a Google Gmail extension, all right? It's a Google Gmail extension. What I used that for in those days is to scrap uh, emails, all right? I install it on my Google, on my Gmail, and then it will ask me for the domain. So if I type in Dangote, for instance, dangote.com, all right? Once I input that, it will bring me, give me all the emails from the top management to the bottom. The HR, the the pata pata, the MDs, all their emails, so you can send your proposals to whoever you want to send out to. Okay, and that that if you are using that means you are bypassing these gatekeepers. You are actually reaching out to people that matters in that company. Okay, you are reaching out to people that matters in that company, basically. So you need you need some of these things. And then if you want to go through them, it is quite simple. Go there with your proposal. Now you must have it in mind that it is either you submit that proposal that day or you don't. Okay, so if you are going there for the first time, you can um, ask that you want to say the management, uh, this is who you are. Um, this is what you are all about. This is what you want to do, okay? Now, if they are giving you attitude, you can ask them to that you want to book an appointment with the management. Okay? Now, it's not compulsory to see them that day. But if luck shines on you, of course, you go in, you submit your CV, uh, sorry, your proposal, or you talk to them. 
all right, situation like that has arrived as arise uh, where I had to go to the school. The gate, the gate man was kind of bouncing me. I was like, no, what if I want to come and put my my child in the school? Say, hey, you have already told me what you wanted to do. While we were talking, the owner of the school was driving, and the way I was talking to the man, the man stopped and said, what's going on here? I explained. Before the gate man even talk, I, I just jump in. I said, please let him in. And that was that, let him in. And then I entered, I sat, uh, sat at the secretary this thing for, like, I think, for like 30 minutes before the man came. I said, he did not even allow me. He said, he came out and said, okay, young man, what are you looking for? And then I explained things to him. He said, oh, really? We are coming, sir, let me see. And then that day I was able to show him, you know, these things I'm discussing with you people. All right, so I, 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 this thing works, this thing works. So the assignments I'm giving you guys, we have about six minutes. The assignment I'm giving you guys, so I'm, I'm done, is that do minimum, uh, minimum 10, maximum uh, 20 or 15 of your niche market, the people you want to target. They are on Facebook, they are on Instagram, they are on Google, they are on LinkedIn. Go and do the research. Go and do the research between now and next, uh, Friday that we'll be meeting. Do the research, get their names and screenshot what they are doing. Screenshot what they are doing, all right, and how you can improve, improve that. And then uh, in the proposal section, in the proposal section, I will show you how you can place, how you can place these things, the, 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 the pictures, and then how you can place your wordings. Okay, uh, I'll send the, I'll send the proposal I'm still working on. I'm still working on it, trying to update some of the contents that uh, that have been outdated. Okay, trying to update the content, and I hope that please you guys do these things. All right, do these things. All right, in the next thirty days, like I said, the minimum, the minimum I want you guys to to be able to address in the next thirty days is ten. You can do twenty, you can do fifty, but no single one of you here should have less than ten new clients. This system works. It works. It works like magic. I'm. I'm not going to sit here and tell you, uh, uh, hypothetical stuff. I say I've not. Hypothetical stuff. I've said I've not done it. I have. It has worked for me in the past. I'm doing it now. Throughout the day, I was. I did something throughout the day. My own. I'm even. I'm even going as far as designing the website itself. Not just proposal now. I'm designing the website. I'm sending the link to them. That's how bad. That's how crazy. It is. I'm designing the website, so I'm targeting myself and lawyers. We are targeting the law firm, all right? We noticed that some of their websites are cake. Some of them, they designed their website since 1999, and it's not responsive. It's not searchable. It's not mobile responsive. So we are trying to penetrate them, all right, with this same system that I'm showing you guys tonight. Okay, please, I need you guys to to do that. Um, yeah. So if you have if you have a question, please um, let's see how, how many we can take. We only have three minutes, or we'll drop it in the group, and then uh, we'll continue from there.